Post some pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends. And ever since you came around, I've never been sober. Always in my head. Met you at a time when I was so low. Went from just talking to taking you. I get so caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight cause I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down And it's not a lie That I die I can't hide Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. It's an engaging and enlightening talk show on life, relationships, and the business of life. Grab a cup of juice and just chill. Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. Live life. Live fully. Hello, welcome to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen, your favorite show on life, relationships, and the business out of life as the is and on lockdown bay. Pretty far much better. Anyways, this more on the snack content for taste. We got to win positive no matter what. Don't forget you can catch Miss episodes on your favorite bo- podcast to support your platforms like iTunes, i Radio, and listeners on SoundCloud, Google Podcasts on Deezer, on Castbox, on Jezebel, and on YouTube. Go ahead, search for Live or Lift by Mobile Receiving, and here you have a pleasant listening experience. So, my question is, how do you handle change? Very important question, you say. Of course, that's what I'll be discussing on today's show. How you can create an atmosphere for changing your relationships. Beautiful. that you alone can change your behavior and other behavior of others, you'll become a change candidate to an intimate relationship with God. You will begin to correct your behavior. You will engage the special person in your life in a conscious effort to correct past arts and you will find a way to correct an atmosphere of change in your relationships. Now, here we go. Let's roll. Number one is for you to set up positive exchanges. Remember that change occurs more often in the price of positive exchanges. When you praise a child for doing things you like and you want to build, you increase in the likelihood that the child will make those changes. Adults are not different at all. If you praise even small movement in the right direction, you will get change. Praise is powerful. It prepares the atmosphere for change. Next, work on yourself. Spend less time blaming and more time working and conforming to the image of God. This is essential to building a lot of relationships. You have to identify your flaws and correct them, or you have the credibility telling the people in your life what to do. Often the person can say he wants me to change, but he's messed up himself. Or another person says she points at my flaws, but we'll talk about hers. Now that's selfishness. First, speak all the sparkle in your eye before you point out the others. Again, the unwillingness to change yourself as a work in progress creates resistance and resistance to change. Take responsibility for yourself first, then watch people follow suit. Absolutely.
gentlemen, you are listening to Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. It's an engaging and enlightening talk show on life, relationships, and the business of life. Grab a cup of juice and just chill. Life Well Lived by Amabila Stephen. Live life. Live fully. Hoops, thank you for hanging around. I'm talking about you can create an atmosphere for change in your relationships. So I'm creating, creating, giving you some other tips that can help you. Number three is for you to resolve conflict. One predictor of sap should not broken relationships is the inability to resolve conflict. Don't lack disagreements or misunderstandings build up in your relationships. This is an healthy, physical, spiritual, and relationally. I agree with your partner to have regular checkups when it comes to disagreements and conflict. Regular checkups like accident question like how are we doing and the thing me bothering you that we have been talking about lately or do this every day or at least once in a week until you raise issues with regularity conflict really is part of every relationship so you need to know that your ability to resolve it makes the difference in force change how I many forces change Number four is for you to become more emphatic. Willingness to change is encouraged while the person feels hurt and understood. Spouses are famous for stumbling, resisting, or resisting change when they feel misunderstood. Now, you effort to intellectually identify and vigorously experience the spouse, your partner's thoughts, feelings, and attitude is called empathy. How much empathy do you show? That's the question. People are far, are far less dis- defensive and far more willing to consider options when they are understood. When you put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to understand what they're going to, they are more willing to share from their heart. Absolutely. Now, what you need to do is that you need to go ahead, practice listening, and then repeat what your partner or the loved one in their life has said. Ask if you got it right and if you accurately reported what the person was feeling or experiencing. This wouldn't be easy. You are learning a new skill. Absolutely. But it's what the time I tell you. Empathy empowers change. It really does. I mean, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's move on to lessening your dependence on others. That's number five. No one person can meet all your needs all the time. You need to know that. Only God can. Since you don't physically live it with him yet, you're still dependent on others. It's hard to have friends to talk with, share activities with and support. It's great when you can depend on friends, but balance is key. So, when friends replace couple intimacy needs, it's not healthy at all. I mean, when your friends replace your relationships intimacy, it's not healthy when others are only source of support. The same is true. Balance your intimacy needs between your partner and friends in some way that you don't expect one of your friends to meet all your friendship needs. Don't expect your husband or your wife or the loved one in your life to meet all the other needs. Sexual, spiritual, deepest intimate needs save this for God and your spouse. Friends can support and add to your intimate covenant relationship but they should not replace them. Did you add that? I mean, friends can support and add to your intimate covenant relationships but they should not replace them at all. Number six, take care of yourself. Self-care is vital. Again, consider balance. Attending to your own physical, spiritual, and emotional health carries an atmosphere for change. When you value others, others will value you too. When you take care of yourself, the burden of worry is lifted from the other person. When you spend yourself beyond reasonable limits, guilt often results. Many women really didn't know how to say no or take time for themselves, including me too. <laughs> Many men do not show themselves spiritually or physically because they are too busy trying to succeed in life. <laughs> nice one. Now, there's a difference between self-indulgence and self-care. Self-care is simply saying, I need to be responsible for replenishing myself. I will see that it happens. Now, that's self-care. When you do this, you are more content and better equipped to deal with change in your life. How do you say to that? Let me round up with the words of Phil Makara. He said, sometimes you make the right decisions. Sometimes you make the decision right. Wow. I, I hate to go. But I have to do this. <laughs> Signing out. Wait a minute. Yeah. You can also catch up this episode on Spotify and Podchaser. <laughs> Now, for me to you, to have a really, really bright heart, one love. <laughs>